Well, I've always been a writer, and like many sort of semi-professional authors, I've been scratching around and looking for, you know, freelance work and working for businesses and companies and small magazines in London. And I had the idea to write a book about a rock and roll band who were very popular. And having done that, and we got that published, that was my first real book. Having done that, it then occurred to me that only fans of that particular band were going to buy that book. So I'd immediately limited my audience. And it was time if I wanted to write a mainstream book, perhaps a best-selling book, and get onto the front table of all the bookshops in, in the UK, certainly was as, it was as large as I was thinking at the time. Then you've got to have a wide interest, generic interest book. And I was thinking about sports trivia, and I was thinking about music trivia, because they were the things that interested me, and I was trying to come up with a, basically a non-fiction gift book idea that was going to be funny, interesting and informative. And it was only until the day that a friend of mine walked into a, a good old London pub with a hangover, which I suggested he should cure with a hair of the dog. Now, we both knew exactly instinctively what that was, but the barman, who was from Colombia, spoke perfect English, said to us, dogs aren't allowed in here, what are you talking about? So we then went away and sat down. Why did we say, say things like to hair of the dog, to turn a blind eye, money for old rope? What I now know are idioms. Um, we used to just call them phrases and expressions. But they're where we, the words that we use mean nothing in the context of the conversation we're having, yet we all know exactly what it means. If I said to you, you'll get hauled over the coals for this tomorrow, you know you're in trouble, but why hauled over the coals? That was the book. That was the idea. That was the, that was the one thing that I could approach and really get my, my teeth into and write about history, which is what I do, is I'm a historian. Um, and so I went away and researched these and found out there were hundreds and hundreds of these idioms that have all evolved from either events or places or things that have actually taken place throughout history. So I could tell the story of history by attaching it to popular culture. In other words, something you already know about, something you've already got some awareness of. I can tell you the story of who Humpty Dumpty was, for example, and that will lead into the to the story of the cannon used during the English Civil War in 1642 that was blown off the wall and that's how the rhyme evolved, it was a piece of propaganda. And so I went away and I wrote this book and we got it published about a year later, um, called it, at the time it was just going to be called Albert Jack's English Phrase Book, but as time went on it evolved into red herrings and white elephants simply for the colours. We were looking for two idioms that had colours that we could use on the illustration. This is how you start thinking about mainstream books. You think about all these things right you know, before you even present them. And so that came out as Red Herrings and White Elephants, and luckily for me it became almost an instant international bestseller and led me into the life of being a professional writer. It gave me the job I've got now.